be called com console password manager, but I will call it the complete password manager. Uh, I'll tell you why. First of all, uh, a little bit about me. I do computer science infosec. I consult for corporate stuff, and I am really into open and free software. Um, I am one of the founding members of Hackadia, which is a hackerspace based in Oslo. And you can ask me anything during or after this talk. Um, so about CPM. CPM is a program to keep track of passwords. You can uh, put your passwords in there and you can avoid losing them. It has a secure storage and it uh, allows you to share passwords in a safe way with trusted people. So, For those of you who brought uh, laptops, you can start with a quick start. I uh, often get impatient and uh, want to try out a thing that I'm listening to a talk on. And so this is an opportunity for those of you who are quick to try it out. On Debian, it's apt get install CPM, and then you create the DB, and you run the CPM. Refer to the wiki for problems. Um, the overview on this talk is, we're going to talk a little bit about the whys, the hows, how to get CPM, how to start it up, how to use it, and uh, what I like to call advanced topics, but really just fun stuff. First of all, CPM, the motivation behind any password manager should be that at some point you will end up having so many passwords that you'll start writing them down. There is a threshold there, it's between three and seven. Past seven passwords, nobody can, unless they're autistic, can remember them all, <laughs> like, like me. Um, so, uh, post-its are dumb. And uh, random text files around your file system are pretty dumb as well. And uh, there is a way of, I don't know, GPG encrypting your random text files. And I'll tell you in a second why that's kind of silly as well. Uh, there's uh, some Linux programs for this, Xwallet and friends, but they have too much graphical user interfaces, so it, they don't let you grab the password like this, um, pipe it. Uh, extract it, all that stuff is, uh, is harder to do. So uh, what password manager is remote console friend friendly and for sysadmins? You know, those people who are really, really need to remember a billion passwords. Um, so big question is why not some other password manager? And that is, uh, well, CPM is flexible, open and extendable. Uh, I'll tell you why, how. First of all, it's an XML blob that's kept in GPG, and then you can put that, stick that XML blob in Git and get a distributed password. Uh, other password managers have this problem of uh, InfoLeaks. Um, I will tell you all about how CPM avoids information leaks, so you don't, so you don't lose your passwords in ways that you didn't realize were possible. Um, yeah, so uh, one of the uh, main features of CPM is its paranoid delusions. Uh, the mere fact that we try as hard as we can to keep your passwords in the database and only for your eyes. Uh, some uh, people were using jQueryring. Uh, it's a terrible program that just keeps one big flat text file. Um, sharing passwords with other people, that requires trust. If you're doing that, um, if you're using trust, you might as well use GPD, Web of Trust. And CPM kind of just sucks less than the alternatives. Um, I might mention as well that there's a new program called Pass, which also does console management passwords. And it's nice, but it keeps all the passwords in individual files. and. Um, for the paranoid inclined, just the name of the file is enough for an attacker to start figuring out what servers you have access to and how to break into them. Um, 
while with CPM, it's just one big encrypted blob and you don't leak as much data. Um, so how? The hows of, uh, of CPM. How does CPM achieve better security um, than other password managers? Well, first of all, I'll tell you how uh, it was built. It was built by this guy called Harry Brickner, a uh, German guy, who did a very good job on it, but orphaned it. And because of bit rot, it stopped working after a while because, I don't know, systems change, it didn't uh, get packaged. And uh, so somebody asked me to fix this program. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, I can, I can adopt this program and uh, maintain it and improve it slightly. It's not a program I wrote, so I didn't plan to modify it in huge ways. I just wanted to make, make it work and uh, for the bugs to be fixed. And that's what was asked for me. That's how I got into uh, maintenance of uh, programs. How to be a maintainer. Uh, basically, this is a side note on how to be a maintainer uh, of any program. You can pick up an orphaned tool. So orphaned means basically either the author is not around or they are just not interested in the program anymore. Although there are many other people who might be interested in the program. Then you give the program some love uh, by fixing bugs, by documenting the issues that are not really bugs but uh, make the program harder to use. Uh, by packaging the program, because this is what makes it easiest for people to, to, uh, to reach it, is when, uh, when you can just install a program with uh, a couple of keystrokes instead of working through the issues. This is gold. And then keep giving the program love, because that's how you keep being the maintainer of that program. Another side note um, is how to package programs. It's covered elsewhere, so I'm not going to go into details. However, I would like to say that putting packages into Debian is NP-complete. And uh, you can spend hours and hours on it. Um, also, if there's anybody out there who can help me put an RPM package into uh, the Enterprise Linux uh, extended repository, uh, please get in touch. Uh, yes. So, how does CP CPM achieve its goals of uh, keeping around the password manager? Well, first of all, it's uh, made with, uh, by NC with something called the so console development kit, which is really just a fancy wrapper for N curses. It uses uh, XMLlib, Zlib to compress the data, and GPGME to talk to GP GPG. So the rest of it should be fairly simple, right? Uh, well, first of all, we want to be very paranoid when we're handling password data because it can suddenly end up in shared memory and it can be, uh, uh, suddenly it can leak out outside of this encrypted store. Uh, so the way we do that is we make sure that the memory that the passwords are read into is never swapped. Uh, that the uh, CPM doesn't dump core when it crashes, if it crashes, and that uh, other users and other programs can't p-trace this program. Because when you can p-trace a program, you can easily access its memory. Also, you want to make sure that the runtime environment of CPM is very thoroughly checked and scrubbed before you start CPM or before you decrypt the password. Uh, yes, so that's checkmate or path, actually. Um, we sign the password database by the last person to modify it. And uh, if you add a password, it can be optionally passed through Cracklib to make sure that it's a secure password. Um, the XML is DTD validated, and this is sort of password database done right. Also, the data format is so flexible that you can just GPG decrypt the password database, gun zip it 
to, to uh, encrypt or press it. And uh, it's packed XML, so it helps to do XML indent just to make it readable. But that just gives you the password databases in raw form. Um, so the, the hierarchy, of, you can organize this, your passwords how you want. So it makes sense maybe to break it down to categories, services, or host services, and then usernames and passwords. But you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want. There's a, a way of putting comments in the passwords. And uh, one password, um, only one password is visible at a time in the console program itself. The idea being that if somebody's shoulder surfing you, they can only grab one of your precious secrets. There's also import scripts to get, grab uh, passwords from, uh, from your other ways of uh, keeping them. And it uh, supports multiple users. The idea being that you can share a password store with your colleagues, for example, your team members. Uh, there's also some uh, misfeatures uh, that I have fixed. In older versions, we had terrible error messages. And uh, that was one of the things that made people have a hard time installing CPM, is uh, usually they'd have problems with uh, setting trust on keys or other GPG-related issues, and CPM would just bail. But these have been fixed. Also, in newer Ubuntu kernels, unfortunately, the kernel has a protection against RP trace protection. And uh, that issue is fixed in uh, 029, uh, CPM 029. And there's a Red Hat build problem, but that is also easily fixed. Uh, to get it, you go to GitHub, Commotion, CPM. Uh, it's been tested on Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora Core, Arch Linux. Um, we will accept contrib pa packages. I, uh, have a couple of them. Uh, for example, the Arch and the Fedora Core packages have been uh, contributed by uh, members uh, that use uh, CPM. Um, installing it on Debian is just at get install CPM. That's from uh, testing and onwards. There is a, a compatibility package for Wheezy on the CPM wiki on GitHub. Then. Um, uh, there's a couple of GPG basics I'd uh, like to step you through. If you're using CPM, you need to have a key pair. You need to have a private and a public key. Uh, defaults for generating keys are okay. You just uh, do GPG dash dash gen key. And if you're paranoid, you can use 4096 uh, 4, bits. Um, then you set it up by initializing an empty database once you have CPM. You write create CPM to write it to create a database. Then you can just add keys to it, sign it, and encrypt it. So uh, I'm just going to open a larger terminal here so that it's visible. And then I'll show you how that looks. Is that visible on the video? Uh, I'm going to move away the old CPMDB, and then I'm going to do create CPMDB. All right. Actually, in newer versions, all I need to do is run. Yeah, I'm a developer, so I just need to run it. And it will tell me that there is no uh, CPMDB, but a new one is created automatically. And then uh, you have an empty screen like this, saying uh, add nodes, nodes and keys. First of all, I hit Control K for keys. And I add a key with Control A. And I type some part of my uh, ID. It finds my uh, GPG key. And that's all I need to do because this is my C CPM, my, my database. And then I add, let's say I'm uh, my password at Sukir. Service, uh, yeah, nice. So 
There I added a, a host, a service on that host, and a username on that service. And now I'm adding a password. However, I can hit Control G to get a, sorry, in, what was it? Mm. I can just add a password like this. There we go. Now, uh, if uh, CPM is installed with Cracklib, it'll check if that's a good password. But uh, it's good because it's longer than eight characters, right? Uh, you will get a warning. It will not refuse you to add passwords. Obviously, you will have lots of different passwords and different qualities in this uh, database. So um, you can also add more hosts, for example. Right? And uh, you can select these. Uh, at the end, you can push escape, quit, save, and that's your database. Now, I have set up GPG agent, which means that I don't have to t type in my password because I've already done so. So I would have to clear a cache. Um, details on how to set that up are on the wiki. Basically, that allows me, as long as I'm logged into a GPG agent, not to have to type in my password a million times a day. And if you have one of those fancy GPG key cards, smart cards, you can use those with GPG agent, which means that you can unlock and unlock the uh, password store with a PIN number. It's pretty nice. Um, nice and secure. Also, uh, so that was me showing you how to use it. Control A adds, Control E edits entries. Control P, password generator. Control K, edits, views, adds keys. Um, you can also search in the database just by writing CPM and then the whatever you're looking for. So here I would just do, so hmm. I'm just going to make this a little easier on me. So that works. And I could do CPM, uh, what was it, secure. There. So that found, it, found my uh, circuit entry, basically. That gives really quick access. And then that will also prompt for a password if you're not, you're not unlocked. So other fun stuff that you can do with CPM is, first of all, is there a question? Sure, go ahead. What kind of uh, search are you using? Is it free text search? Is it fussy search? Can you do complex searches? It's a free text search. On which There's fields? no complex searches, but it will just match. If you, you're, what you're searching on has to exist in one of the elements of the XML hierarchy. So, um, I don't think there is any regex, but it's very easily extendable if somebody has a use case for it to do regexes. Usually you do use this just to find one password really quickly. So, yeah. Thanks. Um, the fun stuff, on to the fun stuff. I mentioned GPG agent already. I'll show you how that's configured. Uh, there's a configuration file for CPM. There's a data import. I'll show you how to do that because all of these things are made as simple as possible. There is a multi-user step, which I uh, uh, would like to show you. And there's distributed CPM, which is possibly the best feature that you can implement in this thing. Um, GPG agent stores your GPG passwords so that uh, you can use your smart card or that just, just opens up your uh, GPG key as long as, your, as long as your session is on. Uh, the way to set it up is by adding uh, either by just running Ubuntu, which is automatically has a key store, or by running eval gpg agent dash dash daemon in your X session file. Uh, there's a configuration file for CPM. Uh, it's called CPM RC. It's, it, it lives, there's a global one, and this, there's one that lives in your home folder as dot CPM RC. 
for uh, there is a detailed example file that lives in user share doc CPM. It, things are where you um, I would expect them to be. There's also um, a simple format to this configuration, configuration file. It's key and value. There's a, you can specify what the password length should be for the generation of passwords. Um, the key, the characters that are allowed for passwords and uh, the search patterns. You can also specify how the hierarchy looks. Uh, there's also data import. Data import is uh, really handy if you already have a password database. And uh, um, the general password database import has eight fields. The first one is host, the second one is comments, and so on. And you just run user share CPM import and, and uh, you can pipe your data in there. We're just going to let everybody move because it's, yeah. Uh, something is happening in the downstairs. <laughs> uh, anyway, multi-user CPM lets you um, trust a specific group of people for a database. And uh, just multi-user CPM in this case would be one machine which everybody has access to, but where they are sharing their GPG, they're not sharing their GPG key, obviously. They have uh, their own GPG key through GPG agent or SSH agent, for example. And uh, the way you do this is, first of all, G you have to trust the other keys through the web of trust, through GPG's own mechanism. Uh, it's easy. For example, if you were to share a password with me, First of all, you'd find my keys or my, the key that uh, you want to share with. And then you would receive that key. And then you would sign it and uh, set trust to that key. If the trust could be marginal, just as long as it's more than unknown. And then you add that key to CPMDB and you save it. And the only thing that you have to be careful of is the permissions of the CPMDB, because that is a file that's shared and writable by everybody who has access to it, Unix file permissions. Uh, so all the CPM users would be in one Unix group, and uh, you would set GID or group ID on the data there, and you would have a wrapper script that makes sure to open that particular file, because CPM just opens .cpmdb in your home folder, you'd want it to do CPM with an argument to specify where you're opening it. And uh, CPM will actually lock the database so that only one person is going to be able to write it at a time, even though everybody is able to read it. Uh, however, there is a better way of doing this, and that's called distributed G uh, G CPM with, with uh, Git. The idea is that you put a do you create a uh, Git repo and you import CPMDB and the, possibly a configuration file and you have a wrapper to pull things out of the repo and if changed, push them back into the repo. What you gain there is that, first of all, you will never lose this password database if you're syncing on many computers. Uh, second, you, you can do this, you can share that database with all your devices, but if you're sharing secrets with a whole team, there is no single point of failure. Sure, there's one place to push and pull your, pa your passwords from, but everybody has a copy of the database. Also, you don't have to deal with Unix for permissions. So uh, just to show you how that looks, I have made a garbage file. I make um, a JIT repo in there. I uh, initialize the CPM database. I add the CPM database to the repo. I commit it. And then I add in a remote. And here I would uh, recommend you run your own, uh, on your own server, your own Git repo. Mainly, not that I don't trust GPG, because it's really made to uh, withstand, like you could send messages. This is your CPM database is a message. You could send messages that are 
made to travel over email to to your enemy's hands and not be decrypted. So you could put, conceivably put this on GitHub, your, your password database. I just don't really feel like that's good for other reasons. Let us say that I lost my GPG key to some evil third party, then I would be in trouble. But they wouldn't have all my secret secrets, just that one. But if I had my uh, password database, easily reachable online, suddenly I would be in a lot more trouble. So I prefer to have my password database on my own server. And if I'm sharing with a team, I prefer that team to have their own server as well, basically. Uh, so uh, this wrapper script that I mentioned is just a way of opening CPM every day, like every time I need it. For example, I call this wrapper script garbage, just to access the garbage file. And uh, it's a shell script that goes into the password, pulls, opens CPM on that pa uh, password database. And then when that is done, it checks if there's a difference. Because then you, that means you've edited the uh, CPM database. And if, it's, if it is uh, different, then it commits and pushes it. And a little bit of a note about commit messages. It's like the names of the files. If I was to encrypt every password as a different file, it would leak information. So if I wrote uh, customer start seed and password, very secret password to all their customer database, that in the commit log would be enough for somebody who grabbed the uh, Git repo to realize some things about me that I wouldn't want them to know. Like that I am an admin for StartSeed, for example. I'm not, but I'm just giving you an example. So usually, me and my colleagues would just push, put the uh, nonsensical commit logs, just, not, just to not leak any information to uh, some third party. Uh, Multi-user CPM is uh, documented in the wiki, the, the GitHub wiki. Uh, future features. We would like to rip out the console development kit and uh, use our own, basically, uh, because that's where all the interna internationalization issues come from. Basically, we can't use UTF-8. Um, we would also like to add some simple trust ma management to CPM. And if somebody con contributes getting CPM into the extended uh, enterprise repository so that it will be available for Red Hat, CentOS, and, and a bunch of other platforms. Uh, now, I would love to hear questions, if there are any. Um, yep. Yeah, I have a question. One of the features that I would love to see would be a way to um, see a log of uh, to see a log for myself if someone in the team uh, were to read passwords uh, a password reading log yeah uh, okay. the case scenario being uh, a password database for a huge enterprise with hundreds of employees hmm. and all the customers and um, like you want to um, you want to have an audit log basically. audit log yeah yes yeah so that is really possible if you're not using the git uh, the, the git approach uh, if you have one centralized system you can make an audit of every read operation or every open of the uh, CPM but if you have a decentralized uh, CPM database, then that is not achievable. So uh, I would actually implement that in the wrapper in uh, the multi-user CPM, the way I described it here with one Unix group for everybody. Because uh, you could either use the um, audit D or just the wrapper itself to write the log and make the wrapper suit but not writable by these people this group of uh, people. Mm. Okay. Then um, I will... Uh
thank you very much for uh, listening. And uh, please check out my other